This episode is presented by BetterHelp, Quench Hydration, DraftKings, and Flow Hockey. The eShow podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you have something new that you would like to learn or a new skill that you're looking to develop? Therapy can help you reconnect with that sense of wonder. Whether or not you've tried it before, it can help everyone despite what you may or may not have going on in your respective life at the moment. If you're thinking of therapy, give BetterHelp a try and rediscover your sense of curiosity. Visit BetterHelp.com THPN for 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash THPN for 10% off your first month. The answer is take the winning run. I get hung up on certain things. I have OCD, Jake. I mean, hi guys, my name's Jeff. I'm um, an equal opportunity lover, you guys know that. But wouldn't the dog want to stay on the meat wagon? He's saying he can convince the dog to hop off. That's insane! Yeah, I'm intelligent. That's such a Jeff answer right there. He's handsome, curly haired, and Jewish sitting right here. Jeff, you are a golden retreat. Hey, Jake, that's what you kids call that drip, right? Dude? It was good despite the gaster consequences, but call me the crystal ball here, man. I'm getting every Everything right except my own picks. That's really to me a battle of two of the coaches with the best hair. Welcome to the E Show, presented by the Hockey Podcast Network. Founded in 2013, the EHL is your next step on the path to count. Over the past decade, the EHL has established itself as the college placement leader on the East Coast. And now, here's your host, the commissioner of the Eastern Hockey League, Neil Rabin. Thanks, Jim. And with that, let's bring in Jake this week. Just Jake and I. Um, but it's fitting because he's in first place. So, like, it's got to be just Jake and I this week. The only thing that matters right now, we could spend this entire podcast just talking about that one spot in fantasy. <laughs> and and we totally we skipped that. to the East Show Fantasy Challenge. Eight, <laughs> eight seconds in. <laughs> uh, but we're actually coming off of the November Regional Showcase where I think we – Started to learn a little bit more about some of the identities of some of these teams. And I want to start off and jump into the Around the East show first, though, with a key question for Jake about the Express Hockey Club. Let's take a look at what's going on Around the East show. So, Jake, what is it about showcases? Would the Express are just like, you know what, we're going to show up and we're not going to give up any goals? Yeah, I thought about this, too, and I was talking to uh, Express defenseman Quentin McElligott about it. I think it's just the way they play. I think their forecheck is just, like, it's super relentless, and it's so hard for teams that they maybe don't play all the time to adjust against. But I say that, and their first game was shutting out the Wizards. So I think maybe they're just nasty, and it really (laughs) helps that they have the best goaltender in the league. And, I mean, they have one of the fastest duos in the league in Hudson Perry and Miles Kidd and speed kills. Yeah. So I think it's just a, a combination of, yeah, the showcase setup kind of favors them when they play teams they don't play often, and then they're just really good at hockey. Because, <laughs> like, the first example that comes to mind, of course, is last year's December showcase where they got all oh, three yeah. in a row. Um, <laughs> but then, like, yes, but then some people would say, like, oh, like – the showcases, the main showcases are, are 10 minutes less. So 10 minutes more to, to give up a goal, not this November regional showcase. Those were the full games. So um, you, you mentioned Koenig. Why is it, in your opinion, now you get to broadcast the team too. Why does nothing change for them when Lucas Toth goes in net? Well, Lucas Toth is really good too. I think he's, <laughs> yeah. as, good, he's as good as a, a backup, I guess, if you want to call him that, as you can get. Uh, I mean, Nick Cota looked at me after he beat the Wizards, I want to say like two weeks ago, and he's like, I think we have two starter goaltenders like right now. <laughs> and I think he's 100% right about that. But um, you know, I was talking to some of the Eagles kids who were saying that, you know, they want to see the way they played at this showcase translate to um, translate to their games against East Division opponents like the Wizards, like the Express, like the Terriers that are in the upper half of that division. And they just said the Express are really hard to score on. Their D yeah. don't put up a ton of points, but they're super mobile. They're super quick to get back. And, you know, they have a ton of forward support. So I think it's a it's a, it's a whole crew effort out there. And then when the Pucks do get to Toth and Koenig, there's not going to be many that get by them. Yeah. And I know that there's not as many returners from last season or, or even, you know, definitely two years ago has there been any conversation 
that you've heard of, you know, <laughs> elephant in the room, back to back years, the Express have been one game away from the Frozen Finals. I know the the format's a little bit different this year with the regional finals, but for the for the for you guys that have returned, have they kind of told that story? I guess you could say. Yeah, I think they all feel, and I think the person who feels it the most is Coach Coda. I mean, the first thing he said to the guys when he met them was he pointed at the two East Division champions' banners, and he's like, those don't mean that much. We want to add another one, and we want it to be the league champions. Yeah. So I I think uh, it it weighs on him the most. But, I mean, you know, there's you know Hudson Perry's a three-year guy for that organization. Dalton Roberto's a returner. I mean, they Lode Arch is a returner. Eric Bjorns is a returner. Vukovic, they actually do have a pretty hefty amount of guys that have been in that organization before. So, yeah, I think it, it definitely weighs on them and, and the help they're getting from the new guys has been, you know, pretty, pretty, pretty high standard. For sure. And we start there, of course, because they just hosted this regional showcase and they had the two shutouts. Uh, obviously, that helps. But looking at the rest of the East Division, it's hard not to early on just think and say, like, man, like, whoever comes out of this division is going to be freaking battle tested because the East is legit right now. Yeah. I mean, you know, every team is in every game virtually. I mean, even the Seahawks who are at the bottom of that division right now, they played in one goal games during the showcase and they lost in a shootout versus the express. They lost one, nothing to the Terriers right after that. So it's not like these games are one-sided anyway, when they're playing you know, the lower half of the division. Bridgewater picked up a win at the showcase. The Eagles swept uh, the showcase. So there you go. Like all these teams are are picking up wins at a pretty decent clip right now. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's going to be a dogfight at the end. It's probably, you know, the most physical and heavy division too. For sure. For sure. And you mentioned the Seahawks. I do want to acknowledge Danny K.O. There have been some good updates there. Want to send our best wishes to him. Uh, Truthfully, one of the scariest scenes i think that we've seen um no pun intended uh you know just it's such a fast pace and, and physical game and just uh, truly a, a dangerous game at the same time right and it was a freak play that he that he was a part of and the the initial scans and tests have been good for him um but i think what's always unique for me is like when something like that happens to see how like quickly like everyone's wearing different jerseys and on different teams in the league and across hockey. Right. But to see how it becomes like one family so quickly is like, it's captivating to me. Like, like there was a silence that like in the building when he was down and like the, even the other side was kind of like checking in on us. Did you notice that Jake? Yeah. Oh yeah. I mean, the Providence was like almost late to warm ups because they yeah. were just, they wanted to see what was happening. And yeah, I think everybody forgets about the hockey when something like that happens as they should. And, you know, I mean, Wolves guys were some of the first guys to rush over there to see if he was okay. So, you know, I yeah. think, uh, yeah, I mean, that's that's what you want to see is that in yeah. those moments, you know, the score did not matter. Nothing else mattered. Yeah. He's in good spirits now. Bills and Aboni, you know, got, got a little laugh out of him too. They have to get a new jersey now. Uh, so so they, they had to chuckle over that. Um, but you know, I wanted to make sure we passed along that update because, yeah, like you said, like, I know, like, for me personally, whenever Trevor says, hey, you got to come in here, like, I'm like, oh, boy, like, that's not good. Something something happened. And so when I went over there, we got the two teams off the ice. But then, like you just said, I turned around, and, and at one point, all the Providence guys were checking in. I think the Express and Rock they Riders just, just ended, so they were checking yeah. in, too. So it was cool to see kind of just the league unify itself for those for those 20 minutes Uh you know, and I and truthfully, I thought the Seahawks were going to come back out flying and 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 use that as motivation. But they're up against a tough Wolves team there, um, who got that win. That was one of probably the better games, I guess you could say, um, of the showcase. But for when we're we're talking about this East Division, it's hard not to acknowledge the very last game. Why is it for you? Do I just jinx this? The last game is always the longest game of the showcase. Uh, I think the hockey gods just need to put that on us. They need to test us, make sure we're on our toes. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, it's good to end in an exciting way and who else, but Riley, Riley Hansom to, uh, score the shootout winner, uh, Long Island's own, the second yes. most important person from Long Island to the EHL. So yeah, there you Jake's, go, Riley. Jake's number one. There you go. So, um, are they, and you mentioned the Eagles earlier. That's why I wanted to get back to them. They feel like, you know, we've used this kind of 
thing before on this podcast like the, the best fourth place team of all time like they that that's a good hockey team yeah i think it's similar to the terriers of last year um i think they need to 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 improve on the way they play some of the top teams in their division and i think they recognize that themselves yeah. um and I think, you know, in some cases, they could probably get out of their own way a little bit. You know, they are one of the more penalized teams in the league. It didn't cost them this week, but it has cost them before. So mm-hmm. I think, you know, fix it up on those things, but still playing just as aggressive and as relentless as they have come to play. I think it'll serve them well. For sure. For sure. That division has three teams that have already hit double digit wins. Uh, first with the Wizards with 12 wins, Express with 10 and the Terriers with 10. The Wizards have the lead in the division right now with 25 points, but obviously it's very clear to circle the, the games played for the Express uh, as they, they've played three fewer games. And I, I still, the number that jumps out to me, we already talked about this, the 19 goals against, and five of those were in the one game against the Avalanche. So like 14 goals against in the other 12 games, it, it's, an, it's an astounding pace so far. Five but, against the Terriers, too. There you go. So, so ten and so, two so, games. Yeah, like so nine then in eleven games. Like that's that that's a pretty uh, stout av- average. So um, haven't touched on this yet. So we're gonna go to the Central. Uh, I got this brand new jersey, guys. I mean, I, I'll give Olivia credit. Not sure if she's trying to earn brownie points, but it's the first one that's had the name bar on the back. So the year twenty four, the year I took over as commissioner. This is. It's a pretty good brownie points. I'm not gonna lie. So no, I, it looks good. A pair, evidently, it's Maine Black Bears colors. I don't know anything about colleges, but uh, <laughs> you know, apparently, you like Maine or something. I don't know. <laughs> well, yes, I am. I am from Maine, as I've acknowledged numerous times. That's what podcast. it is. That's what it is. And 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 maybe I just keep it on uh, to Maine. Maine's playing BC tonight uh, in college hockey on Nesson, so I may have to watch with this on. All right, go go to a Maine game, Jake wearing this and people are like what is that they yeah, could have, have, you the, have you heard about the three ll <laughs> <laughs> uh, but to talk about the central division the nor'easter uh they split their game uh their games i should say at the showcase uh same thing with the rough riders same thing with the apple core um the only thing that team that didn't split or better was the team in first place so for the other four teams they should be exiting this showcase Feeling like in a, in a way, in theory, they made up some ground this week in Walpole. Yeah, absolutely. I think it was a, a pretty disappointing weekend for Prov- week for Providence. So you're saying weekend for these showcases, but yeah, <laughs> no, it definitely is right. I mean, they came in really probably fired up for that matchup against the Avalanche. I think they really wanted that game, right? Like yeah. you know, if you're playing the Avalanche, sometimes you're like, oh, this this might be rough. But like, I think they were super <laughs> fired up for that. They were ready to go and. I mean, one goal with an empty netter, right? We love saying that. And it was, yes. that was how it went for them. They scored the opening goal of the game. So I, I think they're still in a good spot. I think, still think they're a very good team. But um, yeah, I mean, Apple Corps to take down that top team in their division, I think that was a huge boost. Yeah. Uh, you know, they play, they they held their own the very next day against HCRI, just kind of let the, let it slip out of their fingers in the third period. HCRI was a really good third period team. At yep. this showcase, I mean, they did it against Vermont, who was hang- hanging around, and they just did it against the Apple Corps, who was hanging around. So, yeah, I think it's a confidence boost for all those teams. And, you know, HCRI, to me, was the one that looked the most complete coming out of this one. There are a lot of coaching decisions that are made that, you know, you and I can't question. They're the coaches. We're, you know, we're the ones helping cover and, and run the league. Um, and I bring this up because I think it brought us a great laugh. Um we don't have many equipment managers in the league, but we all love <laughs> Greg Pickens with HC Rhode Island, of course, was involved with the college series. He got benched. For yeah, he was a healthy scratch. He was a, he healthy, was a healthy scratch. scratch. He, did, he didn't know what to do. He was, he, it, was like, it was like a lost dog like in the concourse <laughs> of Cadillac. Just head down, like moping, you know, like I, I, was, it, I felt it, terrible. It felt like Ricky Bobby. I don't know what to do with my hands. <laughs> <laughs> But it kind of worked in a way. Like, like I guess, I guess that's the, the question I was going to ask you is like, not many teams have you know the high end equipment guy like like they do, and if the team you know in the coach's mind is getting complacent, could that work? I guess you could say. I mean, it, it did work in theory. 
Yeah, I met. I guess the message was sent, right? They won. They responded. They did what they had to do, and they said those two points were for Greg, which I think is all great. And then he was back the very next day, so <laughs> back in the lineup again. <laughs> that was the funniest though when he came into the office where we were set up in, and he was like, "Yep, got benched." And I was like, "Wait, what?" <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so funny uh but to wrap up the regional showcase then with the north jake uh you, you touched on the avalanche even when it feels like they aren't humming on all cylinders i mean look at the rough riders game right they're up one nothing after 40 minutes and and uh connecticut's kind of hanging in it and then they just snap of a finger and the offense comes to life is this as scary an avalanche team as we've seen in recent years you know, you've seen the best of the best avalanche teams. Yeah. I've seen some pretty high end ones, but you always have said that, you know, the year or two before me were the most deadly. So I think you're better equipped to answer whether <laughs> this team stacks up against those. You know, I know who your favorite, well, one of your, Jesus, I almost just said your favorite player. There's, we have an all Jake team, right? So, um, oh, but I think brewing. like, I just, I, 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 we got to see Jake Hines in person with the college series. Right. And like, just the way that the team follows his lead right now, it, it's like mm -hmm. intoxicating. Right. I mean, it, it's, it's yeah. when he, when he stepped on the gas in that Connecticut game, like they followed. Right. So like, I, it feels oh, like, God. it feels like early on, we are on track for a 17, 18 avalanche team. The 18, 19 team was, was, was by far, you know, right there with the best team in the, uh, of all time for New Hampshire. And the start that they're off to, you know, it's hard not to, not to think that it's, it's similar, right? 12, one and one. Um, but they've won games where they've separated themselves from the opponent and they've won the close games too. So it's, uh, it, it's going to be fascinating to see, but I think kind of like the express in the way, you know, take away the fact that the Avalanche do have two championships uh, to the express, they probably have this same revenge sticker, you know, in their locker room too, that, that they want to break through as well. And that's like, where, like if we're talking playoffs more here in early November, like imagine an express avalanche regional final where both teams feel like they, they have to get over this hurdle that they haven't gotten through over the last few years. Like that would be a highly motivated um matchup if we ever got to that yeah i think one of the most exciting things we're going to see as the season rolls on is the avalanche taking on some of the east division teams that they saw earlier in the year right yeah. they handled the express just fine that five to one win they opened the season up by kind of manhandling the terriers sorry coach Ganyu, but that was a spanking of all spankings <laughs> and, <laughs> and like and since then right the terriers had a seven game win streak i think they've won maybe 10 of their last 11 yeah and you know obviously the express have you know, not let up very many goals since that avalanche game. So <laughs> I think I want to see those teams get, you know, another crack at the avalanche. And I don't believe the wizards have played them yet. I right? don't think they have. No. Yeah. So I, I think those are going to be some of the marquee games to look for as, you know, the abs continue their, you know, what has been a sensational run, you know, who is going to be the team to, you know, pick, pick off a win here and there for them. Yeah, I mean, they play the Wolves next, um, and then next weekend they have two games with uh, Vermont. It's all North Division games right now. Dukes, Wolves, Dukes, Warriors. And then you circle this one, Jake. Tuesday, December 10th against the East Coast Wizards, right? There you go. That could there be a go. big one. Um, you want to circle further to, you know, down the road. The December showcase in Haverhill, um, they actually have a game with the Nor'easter that I'm wearing right now. Um, a rematch, you could say, with the Eagles, and then sandwich in between the 87s. So um, that would be a great segue to the South Division because a team, and, and I know Coach Hooley will be okay with me saying this, they couldn't score, and now they know how to score. <laughs> so, Which is always crucial for winning hockey games, so I yeah. hear. Yes. What, what, what was the word that we used in March, Jake? Oh, that was right. Inevitable. This is inevitable what the 87s have kind of turned back into again. Um, and it's hard not to put the point of finger at uh, Alex Lakoff and say, yeah. since he's arrived, things have turned around for them. 
Yeah, Anthony DiPaolo said, like, put the league on notice, like, he is back. And what was crazy <laughs> to me was that was two seasons ago. Yes, I, I, I forgot about that. I know. I was like, oh, I wasn't he, like, isn't he just a returner? No, he's not. He's not. And, uh, you know, I mean, I think a lot of credit also goes to Coach Hooley. I mean, he, think, I think he knows how to get the most out of his teams. And, you know, yeah. we saw him a little stressed out back at that October showcase, feeling it a little <laughs> bit, maybe a little more than a little bit. But, um, yeah. you know, he hunkered down with his team and he's getting the responses he wants from them. I mean, they just took down the first place New Jersey Bears. Uh, they've been putting up better shot numbers. They've been creating more. And they most importantly, they've been finishing more because yeah. we saw them in October. They were able to have the chances against a team like Ridgewater, but they just couldn't break through. So, yeah, I think they even had a penalty shot in that game, right? Like, I guess if you're not scoring on P shots and you're not scoring a five on five, five on four, it's really not going your way. Yeah. So, no, I think it's, it's huge to see this turnaround from them. And in a division that usually has the best parity, I think it's going to help things out going forward. And then you see you know, Philly Hockey Club picking up wins. Little Flyers, as they've rounded out their roster, they've picked up more wins. So yeah. you know, I think the, the trend is what we normally see out of the South right now. Just came maybe like two weeks later than it normally does. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure for Huli, it's like, hey, we've won five straight games, but we're still 12 points behind. Like, like well, that's damn. just the bears doing bear <laughs> stuff. I mean, it's, yes, it's it's not it's not you know the fall months. It's September. It's October. It's November. <laughs> it's December. Like that's how it goes. They just need to figure out how to keep it going into the new year. Do you like think of these and like write them down on a notepad and then say like I'm gonna use that or does this just come to you? No, that just. No, that one just that I just that got was me. just that was natural. Okay, that was just you. that was just magic in a bottle, you know, okay. just like my fantasy <laughs> picks, baby. I'm not getting there yet, Jake. I know you want me to skip a segment to get there, but we're almost there. Somebody asked me my picks and I couldn't remember them. I think it was you, uh, right? <laughs> Didn't you ask me my picks like uh, at the maybe? Thing and I was, but you're in first place. You gotta remember your picks now. Now, no, I know them now, but I okay. think at the okay. showcase when you asked me, I didn't know at the time. Okay. Okay. But for the Bears, remember, we're still in the Bear month, so you can keep We're still in the Bear month. Oh, yeah, all right, all right. <laughs> so, uh, flipping over to the EHLP, um, it kind of hit me this week a little bit, Jake, that, like, it, it's – it's with the way that the showcases are this year, I, I know you will see them more because you're calling some games. I won't see as much of P action because they're just bookended um, w- w- beginning of the season and the end of the season, right? So mm-hmm. – um, we're going to learn a lot about the P in between, I guess you could say. So let's yeah. work north to south. Um, for the Wolves, I, it, I I had to pinch myself and, and be like, oh, I have to go update the record books. Like, they're on a 16-game winning streak now. I forgot that I have to go check to see you know where that ranks in terms of history. So had to remind myself to go do that. So if you go to the uh, team records page, they are up there now second longest winning streak of all time behind the last season's New Jersey 87s who had 17. So I oh, guess wow. let's, let's, let's start here, Jake. And I'm going to put you on the spot. Right. And, oh. and maybe this is bulletin board material for future teams, but at the same time, I, I would think that you know, if, if you're another team, you already see their record and you're motivated enough to face them, but Coming up tomorrow and Sunday, yeah. two games yeah. against the Avs. Do they emerge from those games at 18 and up? No. Oh. <laughs> no, they don't. They don't. Win the first I, I, one, yeah. tie the win the first one, tie the record, <laughs> or lose the first one, start a new streak. I'm oh, assuming. Man. I'm assuming you didn't you're saying there was going to be a follow up. <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, no, I, I, oh, dude, that's a really hard question. I, I feel like the abs have probably been thinking about this game for a long time. Uh, you know, a chance to, to get back at these guys, but, uh, I don't know. Uh, that's, that's tight. I, I think probably, I, I think it's definitely going to be a split. I'll say they tie the record and drop the second one. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Between now and when we hit holiday break, which like I can't even say believe I'm saying holiday break in December, but we're in November, so it's kind of just over a month away. Uh, they do play the Avs five times. Sorry, 
six to, oh, sorry i counted that wrong five times exactly two home three away so something that's uh gonna be fun fun to watch and see because we have touched on this a few times in the podcast that it feels like those two teams are kind of the ones destined to face off yeah. um in the north division yeah. finals like but you could still say that you know valley and adirondack and, and even vermont feel like their teams are in the top eight top nine in the entire league um just what we're having in the north division of the ehlp feels like the east division uh, of the ehl yeah i agree i agree and i think valley i mean they haven't, they haven't played as many games as the other team in their division coach mcgrath is happy about a defenseman they just picked up cam duvall little brother of andrew duvall so yeah we'll, we'll see they just had a tough loss this past week I mean, it was a huge win for the nor'easter over you know one of the upper echelon teams in the p show so mm-hmm. yeah we'll see how how they respond to that as well yeah i mean look at the nor'easter next jake um obviously they, they they've built this new model for themselves this year so they're probably a little bit behind in game count because of this right but quietly on a six game point streak yeah not bad i got to see them last week uh take on you know, the express and they came back from a couple of deficits they had the first lead in the game it was a good back and forth hockey game and i think they definitely have some players there i was really impressed i thought shane bradley on d was probably the best one of the best players on the ice for either side yeah. um but yeah no i think they have something there and uh you know there's they're together every single day. They're part of this, like you said, like this different model. So they're at the rink every day together from like eight to two. So I got to think that helps things. They all live together. Yeah. So, I, you know, it's different than maybe a P team that has, you know, guys in different high schools. The guys are going home, right? Like this is a different situation for these guys. Yeah. Um, and I think it's brought the team together. You know, I've heard a couple stories about some cooking mishaps from Coach Esposito. I heard. One of the players tried to cook vegetables directly on the burner. That was a story that Coach <laughs> that Coach Esposito told me. So maybe off the ice, there's some things they have to work on. But I think you know they they getting they're getting it better and better on the ice. There wasn't a fire, was there? Uh, no. So okay. I think Espo caught the young man in the act. Like I'm just picturing broccoli, like directly on a stovetop i don't know what the vegetable was it could have been asparagus it could have been i don't know carrots but there was vegetables on the burner itself but like how would you then scoop the vegetables off the now i don't think he was at point b yet okay i think he was just (laughs) trying to get the vegetables warm wow um I'm, I fall I'm, there. I, I'm I'm just I'm lost, man. Like you you gotta put the vegetable in something, man. Like mm-hmm. I'm just I'm picturing myself trying to like use tongs on this on the stove. Yeah, I don't know <laughs> exactly how he thought that would end, but didn't impact their streak though. Their six, <laughs> six game point streak. I mean, the streaks column is kind of awesome in the EHLP because you look above them. Um, in that East Division, five game winning streak for Providence, six game winning streak for the Seahawks. So, th- so they, those guys are hearing what I'm talking about with the North Division and the Wolves and the Avs and the Warriors in Adirondack, and they're saying, "Hey, we're just as as, as top heavy in our division." So, um, I know, I know you and Trevor brought this up to me, Jake, uh, at the showcase. Um, the fight to get in to the Frozen Finals for the North and the East Division teams. Um, is going to be very, very significant in the EHLP. Yeah, I mean, I, it's it's a it's a tough situation with the three divisions, but yeah, no, I mean, there are a lot of good teams up there. I've been particularly impressed with the Seahawks, and I mentioned that I love the way they play, and they have a lot of depth for uh, an EHLP team, and they got a lot of guys sharing time. And I think when you have guys that share time, it helps slow down the game in that EHLP level, and it makes guys more confident and comfortable to do things that they want to do, right? Not yeah. less, not necessarily be a little bit more afraid to make mistakes like on the ehl side of things providence does the same thing yep. um so there you go with that but uh, you know i mean it's i think it's going to be a dog fight to the end right now obviously i think it's the wolves race to lose right the same way we could say that about the two teams that were at the top last year it was their race to lose yep. especially with the at large so i think the same thing goes for this year but 
Uh, yeah, no, I think I think the Wolves Seahawks matchup is something that I'm gonna want to see. I know I was talking to some Providence kids when I was at their their EHL game against HCRI, and they're like, "We want another crack at the Wolves." So I think they're <laughs> they have that they have that target on their back. Yeah, for sure, for sure. And then we brought up the records page early on, and we got to bring it back up because we, we touched on the goaltending of the Express at the EHL level. And the 87s P team started raising their hand to say, like, you see us too. Um, Jake, you came up with this nickname. I think this one was probably more like well thought out uh, on the fly, also. No, Justin thought of it. Oh, okay. Then you can't take credit for it. I did it. You gave no. me credit for it. And you did it last week too. And I told okay. you, okay. you can't take credit for it. Oh, you know what I'll take credit for? First place in fantasy. Thank you very much. We'll get there in a second. Okay. All right. But All right. Pat- Patrick McGillis Shuddy. Okay. Um, five shutouts so far <laughs> in the regular season, um, which ties the single season, uh, single regular season record um, with three players previously that have hit that mark. So I think it's, it's probably safe to say he'll get one more and set the single season record. The bigger question is, can he get three more and break the all time record by an 87 by an 87? Yeah. So all time, Jason Mariko, who actually wears this Jersey now with an Oyster. We love you. Um, all star too. Had seven shutouts. Um, throughout his EHLP career with the 87s. Patrick McGillicuddy has five, obviously, all in the season. But also, they brought back Frankie Smith, who also has five. None yet this season, though. So, if you're those two guys, Jake, or bring Mikey in, goalie battle, right? Are they both trying to get to eight before the other one? Of course, yeah. I think you got to. And I think it, it motivates each other, right? I mean, they have... A target set in mind, and guess what? It's helping the team too, right? They've had no shortage of wins so far this season. Keeping the goal against goals against down will only do that team more favors, and you know, division that I think has improved from last year's Southern EHLP division. Yeah, for sure, for sure. So, all right. Well, without further ado, I'll give you your floor now, Jake, and we'll jump to the E Show Fantasy Challenge. Now it's time for the E Show Fantasy Challenge. Follow along on the EHL app, available now for free on both Apple iOS and Android. As we always do, just to delay for a second here in Stall Tactic, um, we talk about our fantasy first. I'm actually facing uh, Jeff this week. Oh, man, I had come back and I had taken the lead going into last night, and then Jake's team went, or Jeff's team went off last night. So, hmm. A little disappointing. How, how's uh, how's your team doing, Jake? You and Mikey? Uh, yeah, we're doing pretty well. We were ahead last night when we last checked, so I hope things are staying the same. Like I said, I'm the Billy Bean of the organization. Uh, Mikey is the Art Howe. We're money pucking this thing, and it's going to be uh, a wonderful thing. Also, uh, Moneyball is the greatest sports movie of all time. For those that don't know, mm-hmm. um, we're all we're both part of the two and two pack. The the Basile brothers, uh, Jeff, and then myself were all part of the two and two pack. So yeah, yeah, we had. I mean, that storm in Florida messed us up, like because we lost games from Brahegi and Kachuk. <laughs> like if there was any consequence from that storm that really hits home the most, I think it's that. Yeah, yeah. Well, as I always say, Jake, if any of us you know venture south of of two and two, we can always pivot to DraftKings. The quest for the Stanley Cup starts now. The puck's dropping on the 24-25 season. Get in on all the action at DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NHL. It's super easy for first-timers to get started. Try betting on something simple, like picking up a team to win. Go to DraftKings Sportsbook app, select your team, and place your first bet. And if you're new to DraftKings, listen up. New customers bet 5 bucks to get $200 in bonus bets instantly. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now and use code THPN. That's code THPN for new customers to get $200 in bonus bets when you bet just 5 bucks. Only on DraftKings. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER. In New York, call 877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY-467-369. 
in Connecticut. Help is available for problem gambling. Call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort in Kansas. 21 plus age and eligibility varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. For additional terms and responsible gaming resources, see dkng.co slash ice. Copyright NHL 2024. All rights reserved. All right, I've stalled this for long enough. On the 8th, there's still a lot of time to go here, Jake. But on the 8th of November, you are in first place. I'm just place. really, I'm going to say this right now. If I don't win, I, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself. Like, this means more to me than you okay. guys even think. <laughs> like, I just want to, I need to see, you know, I think, Justin, uh, I know you're here right now. You're listening. I think we need to make a special graphic if I win. I want my face on it at least four or five times. Um and, you know, I want to just, you know, speak to the players that are uh, part of my organization, uh, Declan Kelly, Braulio CU, and Alex Koenig. Uh, it's not about you guys anymore. It's not about your teams. It's not about winning. It's not about championships. It's not about committing. It's about me. Um, and I want um, this month, I want you guys to know this is all about me. And that you can put everything aside. December can be your month to do, you know, whatever you need to do, you know, get your life on track, right? But shutouts wins points goals assists it's all about me right now uh eastern hockey league hashtag where jake comes in first so like islanders win the 24 25 stanley cup jake wins november of fantasy this is more important okay wow that that really yeah is i mean one is significantly important. more realistic the good than thing. the other <laughs> That's fantasy, everyone. He yeah, doesn't think correct. the Islanders are going to win, yeah, no. despite the flag behind them. It's just for decorating. Anyways, <laughs> I mentioned how there's still a lot of November left. Yes and yeah. no. Right? The last games, you know, before Thanksgiving are the 24th, and then neither division plays again until December. So we're either going to keep the foot on the gas if we're Jake, or we're just going to pack it in defensively and just hang on tight for the win. Right? But I would say this. You're only up by... I believe 0. 0.8. So you probably need to get a few. Yeah, I wouldn't points mind here. it if we're being honest. I, I need a big weekend from Braulio. I mean, he's got back to back against the Wolves. I mean, play with a little motivation, man. Yep. It's not just you. It's about it's about me. So please, you know, get you know, unhitch unhitch the trailer. I know he's uh he's a uh, he's he can fly out there. So, you know, let's create something out there, Braulio. Need you, bud. Look look at the top yeah. ten, right? Number one, you know, reporter. Number two, I believe, is a fan, okay? Um, Patrick Johnston. Number three, Caden Clegg, player. Number four, Charles Day, player. Number five, Devin Kelly, player in the league. Number six, brother of, of Jake Pasil. That's, his, that's like, his claim to fame right <laughs> there, Number <Floss>. seven. <laughs> number seven, Rodion Truskin, player. Number eight, Teddy O'Keefe, player. Number nine, Jim Pasqualone, guessing father. I would assume um, number 10, Elliot Cobb player. So the, the, the top 10 are players for the most part. So I find that kind of funny, but also and when you awesome scroll down, it doesn't time. stop. There's so many players. It's awesome. Yeah. And they're all picking their teammates. I, I love it. I think it's so cool. Yeah. 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 Where am I? Oh my God. Yeah, my I'm my fingers just got tired from well, finding you, know. you. I had to keep going for so long. <laughs> Listen, if you look at what Mike Rinaldi did up until the beginning of November, I think he had eight goals in three games, including two hat tricks. And then November came and he was like, no. Nope, Some of you guys just don't have a, out. your you know, finger on the pulse like I do. <laughs> well, where, where I really, really went wrong, Jake, is I picked the wrong St. Hilaire. Wow. So far. Jackson had a four goal game yeah, yesterday. Yeah, I don't know. That game. was not nice, Neil. <laughs> oh my God, Jake! I'm in fifty second. That's place. not Cooper saying Hilaire's fault. Thirteen. Well, he needs to be passing the puck to his brother. Then I need to look at one of the goals because I could have sworn you he had you an assist take on that goal. Is really what you should have done. They're a package deal. That's your your yeah, your no, lies in saying wisdom. that. Maybe I do that in December. I'm just, I haven't been this far down before. <laughs> <laughs> like, 
Like this is I'm in the I 50s, have, which is Jake. why this is so personal to me. Okay. I mean, to see Ugh. last month's leaderboard and to not be a part of it. Do you think I got any sleep that night? <laughs> When the, uh when you found out that you were in oh, first yeah. place though. So for those that don't know, the fun part in, in like updating this is you you punch all the, the stats and whatnot into the back end Google Sheet, and then there's this this like anticipation of when you sort the column. And Jake was hovering right over my so- shoulder when I hit sort, and like I hit the button and his name pops up first, and the yell was like was barbaric. It was loud. And the, yeah, and then you did Correct. the heartbreaker, Selly. Like, we probably could pull the video from Rob's uh, office camera. Um, How many heartbreaker Sellys did I hit in that office? <laughs> At least fourteen this weekend, this week. <laughs> so, you're in first place, Jake. Five point eight. Sixteen days to go um, in the November, um, and and hopefully for you, you can join Christopher. Uh, Richard and the uh, round yeah, of champions. Yeah, I, um, so imagine we both end up taking Zach Spacuzza one month. It's funny. <laughs> I was like, I told Riley Van and I'm first place in fan. He's like, "What? Did you pick me?" And I was like, "Oh, Riley." Yeah. <laughs> this is the <laughs> tough breakup conversation that we have to have. <laughs> Anyways, mention the 16 days left to go before teams hit the Thanksgiving mm-hmm. break. So let's talk about now some upcoming games to circle and what to watch for. And now here's what to watch for in the EHL and the EHLP. Obviously, we're recording this and dropping it a day later than we usually do because of the showcase this week, dropping it on Friday, uh, kicking things right off with with Bears versus 87s. That was a great game on Wednesday. So I think that's probably right now, Jake, my game to watch this week because I think just the way that the 87s are trending um, and the Bears being in a bear month, um, mm-hmm. another another great matchup like Wednesday, in my opinion. Yeah, I think you can't ignore that one. Uh, I'll take a look over the weekend. I mean, we do have another battle of Philadelphia, right? That was decided by just one goal. So maybe I'll stick yeah. with you down south Saturday. Uh, early evening is 420. Do you consider that evening? Yes. Okay, so that's an early evening matchup at okay. Hollandale. I'll, I'll, I'll rock that one. I usually... You know, my definition, and maybe this is because I'm old now, um, evening is like 4 to 6.30. I think evening, uh, okay, Co- Coach Kyle, thank you for explaining daylight savings time to me. That was, I was having a tough time wrapping my head around that one. But I think <laughs> now that it gets dark around like 4, 4.30, <laughs> I think now <laughs> evening is 4, whereas before yes. it was 5. That's okay. my take, yeah. Okay. Um, I'm going to circle another <laughs> game just for the hell of it. Um, maybe I'm speaking on behalf of Jeff here. Ooh, we'll, we'll say that, right? Right. I, like that. I did not realize Providence booked themselves three straight games at Cadillac Ice Arena, two as part of the showcase, but then they go right back there to yeah. face the Express on Tuesday. I'm really excited for that one. And they're trying to snap this two game losing streak. So, um, I think speaking on behalf of of Jeff, Jeff is too. Um, so we go to the <laughs> EHLP next. Um, we've already kind of touched on this series between the Avalanche uh, and the Wolves, those two teams facing off on Saturday and Sunday. Um, so I'll touch on another Saturday-Sunday series and Vermont and Adirondack, right? That's a rematch of uh, a first-round playoff matchup the last two years. So uh, keep, interesting to keep an eye on those two games as well. Uh, how deep am I allowed to go in my EHLP selection here? You can go as as deep as you would like. Okay, I'm going to go to Providence uh, at the Frozen Finals. Uh, whatever teams those are, that's my what to watch for. <laughs> okay, no, I mean, listen, there's not like a ton going on on the weekend. I didn't want to have to pick uh, the Express again, but yes. they do have a two set against Providence who beat them three to one with an empty netter. As we like to say, yeah, always uh, two weeks ago, and then they play Bandits Monday, and then they have a back to back against Adirondack. Yeah, so there is a gauntlet going on for those guys. So yeah, I and, think that's, uh, that's and, a fair choice. And again, speaking on behalf of, uh, of Jeff, the Adirondack coming up—that's kind of an awesome one for us, right? Because typically we aren't able to see that as much 
outside of a showcase, and I mentioned this earlier, with the two showcases in the EHLP book and in the schedule, to have a matchup like that, you know, in the middle of the season, um, that's yeah, pretty, sweet. pretty, pretty unique. So, um, one to keep Feel an eye free on. To come to the Cadillac for it, Neil. Feel free to come. We'll see. <laughs> Listen, I, 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 like I, I know, I know that if I show up and you're still in first place in fantasy, like that's all we're going to talk about. Correct. So like, I don't know if I want to be a part of that yet. Mm. <laughs> mm. Maybe I'm the problem. <laughs> never, never. Um, but I appreciate everyone tuning in this week. Obviously dropped it a day later because of the showcase. We'll get back on the usual schedule. Uh, if you will next week for Thursday, working on a guest player interview for that. So I guess let's toss this out there, Jake. Any players that want to be added to like the waiting list that want to come on, reach out to Jake. He'll make the list. He's got a lot of notes in his phone. Um, oh, so many notes. You can, so create, many messages. you can create a new note outside of your all Jake team draft. Mm. Yeah. Players that want to come on. Because – and again, yeah, no. we already got our we got our top six figured out for the top Jake team, so oh, we're amazing. running out of spots here, folks. So, but I will say this too, Jake. For any players that are interested in coming on, understand that JJ Dean raised the bar, and then mm-hmm. Corey Castle raised it again. So, yeah. like we, this is a podcast that doesn't doesn't go back. We go forward. So, you got to come up and you got to raise the bar. Maybe you have to you have to come on and you have to take shots and make some big claims. So. Anybody that wants to do that, by all means, just text Jake. Okay. I no, like it. I, mean. I like it. I, I commented my phone number on Jefferson Mills, like a Jefferson Mills post, so he could go find it there. Did you really? Yeah, it was like a picture of him with sunglasses, so I just commented my phone number. <laughs> what? I thought it'd be funny, you know? Did you get any calls or texts? Uh, I mean, I don't think anyone related to that. Before you don't want to see what... before we hang up on this, how many unread texts do you have right now? Because this it, that makes my head. Can you spin. see it? Oh, four hundred sixty nine. Like what? Like how do you live like that? Listen, if you want to get a hold of me, call me. I hate texting. I call you. You have one hundred and five missed calls. Fair. <laughs> Unless those are voicemails. No, those are missed calls. Like. Try and contact me if I answer, I like you. How about that? Is that better? That, no, that's exactly what it is. Okay. That's exactly what it is. There's a lot of blue here, and I'm sorry. If you're wow. blue, you're not getting picked. On that either. note, if you can't make it out to visit Jake in person for all the games that he's calling over the next week, uh, you can listen to him online through Flow Hockey. We'll talk to you next week, and Jeff will be back with us. Love you, Jeff. Thanks for listening to The E! Show, presented by the Hockey Podcast Network. Learn more about us at easternhockeyleague.org and follow us on all of your favorite social media platforms. Also, be sure to subscribe and get notified when our next podcast episode is released.